Bad Podcast, episode 22. Uh, happy you're still listening if you are. If you're not, well then, forget about you. Uh, as you notice, I'm actually standing now. I thought this would maybe give me a bit more freedom to kind of wave my arms around and, and do whatever, but uh, just kind of trying it out. See how that goes. I've been sitting for a while. Why not stand, I always say, I think. Uh, <laughs> Somehow it's Thursday. I don't know how it became Thursday. Um, this week's kind of just flown right by, and uh, I, for one, am looking forward to the weekend, uh, as I do for most weekends. I don't know that there's too many people that dread an upcoming weekend. Uh, hoping the weather gets nicer, too, because yesterday it was snowing, and things are already depressing enough. Do we need snow in April? Uh, the answer is no. So <laughs> that's kind of what we've been dealing with yesterday. Just kind of looking out my window one minute. It was sunny. The next day it started snowing. So uh, it is what it is, right? Lots of news to talk about uh, today. Um, I feel like it's a fucking circus right now. Like, I just don't understand what's going on. Well, I do kind of understand what's going on in the U.S. right now. But, I mean... Let's let's talk about uh, Trump's uh, advisory committee for uh, restarting the the economy. Uh, that way, you just I assumed I think everyone assumed there'd be some uh, some household names in there, fellow billionaires and stuff like that. But literally, uh, and I haven't done the calculations, so I'm just gonna throw this number out there. I have to say, at least eighty percent of those people are billionaires, um, and you've got some ridiculous names in there. So. Uh, you know, you got Mark Cuban, you've got Mark Zuckerberg, you got Elon Musk, you got Jeff Bezos, uh, and then you got Vince McMahon. Like, what is going on? Like, what world do we live in right now? A a amongst all sorts of other billionaires, very influential people in the stock market, um, you know, big companies, that sort of thing. And there's nothing like getting the economy that to help the everyday person out. Uh, by throwing the richest people in the country together and hopefully they can figure it out because we know a bunch of sociopaths in one room are going to be able to, not that that's going to happen but let's just assume uh you think these people are all going to play nice to each other or with each other like that's that's crazy they're all like very um uh what's the word i'm looking for i can't remember anyways they're really full of themselves so um that should be interesting um i mean Elon Musk, on the other hand, I like Elon. He's a great, he seems like a great guy. Um, <clears throat> and he's kind of like, I think more of a robot than, a, than like a person uh, in the nicest way possible. I don't see people really, I, I don't know what the value of this is. Everyone's going to have their opinion. You can't take everyone's opinion. And I mean, America's, in my opinion, broken in a lot of ways because of the amount of billionaires they have and, and how the rich get richer. So like, what are you trying to do? Restart a whole system that just benefits the rich again? Like, I don't know. I just don't get it. Uh, but at the same time, I, sh I really shouldn't be surprised by all this. It's, uh, uh just another, another chapter in our, in our current, uh, uh, history book that we're writing that, uh, people are going to look back a hundred years from now and be like, what the hell was that? So, I don't know. I just don't get it. Um, and, I mean, the U.S., as a Canadian, I really don't have much to talk about outside of, you know, a little bickering between, like, Andrew Scheer and whatever garbage he's saying these days. If I don't even know why he's relevant. Uh, and as I was talking about yesterday with Trudeau leaving the house to go to the, the cottage or whatever and everyone being up in arms about that. Look, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, at the end of the day, I really don't care, all right? Um, but uh, in the U.S., I mean, now the next thing is that uh, Trump is trying to place blame on the World Health Organization, saying that they uh, didn't help in the preparedness of, uh, of all our countries, and he's just looking at someone to blame. And the problem is, is that people are going to believe him. Uh, and it was never his fault. It was the World Health Organization's fault. And here's what, gonna hap what is going to happen. You might as well just take a nuke and fucking drop it on Africa or any other uh, third world or uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, poorer countries in general. Because what's going to happen is the U.S. contributes 16% of the entire budget for the World War, uh, Health uh, Organization. And everyone's so laser focused on what's going on in the U.S., what's going on in France and Germany and Italy and all these countries that have money. And 
no one's even looking at what the effects are going to be to African nat nations, to India, to Syria. To, I mean, the, the, the list goes on, right? Um, it's a, it's a trickle-down effect. A lot of people are going to be affected, and a lot of people are going to die because of this. Um, so I don't... I don't know what to tell you. We'll have to just kind of wait and see, but it's it's a very tragic thing that's about to unfold. Now, it's not set in stone by any means. Uh, apparently, the U.S. is going to conduct an investigation uh, over the next 60 to 90 days, and I guess they're what they're trying to say, and I haven't looked too far into this, and I, I probably will today. Um, you know, it's, it's a ploy to say that they're sort of uh, integrated with China and some sort of uh, weird... Um, plot or I, I don't even know what it is just uh, corruption in general I think is what they're trying to get at but we all know we all have it on camera we've all seen it we know what the Trump administration uh, said about uh, the coronavirus and that it was a hoax and they took their time they didn't take matters seriously and here we are right now they have I haven't even checked the numbers today but I'm sure it's close to like 700,000 cases in the US uh, and climbing and uh um, yesterday they had like 2,500 deaths just under that. So, yeah, blame whoever the hell you want. I think we all know what happened. I don't, I'm not even suggesting that this is solely on an administration because things would have happened regardless of who was in charge because they have a shitty healthcare system. Um, and a lot of people, and it's a fairly, nah, I mean, when you compare it to Europe, it's not very densely populated, but in compared to Canada, yeah, okay, it is. There's some, some huge pockets in there with very dense populations, like New York, uh, New York City. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I really hope it's just kind of, I don't know, Trump just going off, but I don't know. He's trying to act more and more like a dictator uh, every day, and uh, at the end of the day, I don't know how much that really surprises me. Um, and kind of like what I was saying earlier is, uh, when we look at the da data, we look at the numbers, which doesn't tell you every story, of course. Um, it looked like things were starting to, like, they're starting to, like, flatten the curve a little bit. Um, but then it spiked up again yesterday. So I don't know what the magic number or, like, a ma number of days you have to go for, uh, cases to kind of decline and what that looks like. I know there's lots of interactive graphs and things that you can uh, you can take a uh, take a gander at, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're all kind of guessing right now. We no one really knows the answer, and I'm uh, just kind of hoping for the best at the end of the day, right? Uh, meanwhile, parents are parents with kids are, are trying their darndest to to keep everyone uh, sane and uh, keep the kids occupied. Uh, which is a challenge for everyone. So, interestingly, like, I, I wouldn't say interesting. I think a lot of parents are just sort of, we're gassed, you know, we're tired. Like, you can only uh, uh, entertain your child for so long, and, uh, you know, they all, they want attention constantly. And, and there's, you know, you, you feel guilty sometimes as a parent. Like, oh, I really should be doing more or... Uh, you know, maybe maybe I should uh, focus on a more structured environment for my kid. Now, I have sort of a weird situation where my child is four. She's not, she hasn't been through the whole kindergarten system yet uh, with uh, a little bit more structure. Now, she goes to Montessori, but, uh, I mean, kids at that age, I mean, it's been, what, like two months since she's been at, uh, at school, and you forget things pretty quickly uh, from a structure standpoint, right? So you're trying to pick up the pieces, but uh, every day is... is is a new challenge. You can't just, I, I can't expect most parents to be on. I mean, you, at one point you just get like, yeah, sure. You, you can have ice cream for breakfast. Why the hell not? Uh, and it's, uh, it's balancing sanity, which is keeping the kids happy sometimes. And of course you got to put your foot down as well, uh, from time to time, but it's not easy. Um, anyone who does have kids at home right now, I'm sure they, uh, they feel what I'm saying and, uh, and, and totally get it. But on the plus side, I'm trying to come up with some cool games and activities you can do for the lazy parents that don't want to really do a whole hell of a lot. Uh, so I mentioned that show that my daughter's been watching yesterday. It's called uh, Bluey on, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Really good show. Uh, and uh, they've had a couple cool games. So one of them they did was uh, uh, called uh, Mommy Daddy Mountain or something like that. You literally just lie on the ground. Uh, one of you kind of sit up on a couch or something. And they, they climb the mountain. Uh, fun for everyone, right? You're just gonna lie there, if you're, especially if you're hungover. It's a great game. 
uh, <laughs> um, or just tired, right? You don't have to be hungover. Um, another one, they had like this claw game where you just get their stuffies and you make them pay a coin, but to get a coin, they got to do a, a chore. So they'd run around the house doing some sort of chore to give you a fake, fake coin so that you could pretend to play the claw game and grab one of their their uh, their toys and they, you give them like a, a stick or something to pretend it's the, 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 the joystick. It, it works really well. My daughter loved it. Um, I should probably post these clips so you know what the hell I'm talking about. And I'm not just like sounding like a crazy person, um, which sometimes I do, but, uh, super interesting, something to, to consider. And I've got a, a special treat. Um, I really, uh, yeah, I'm going to save it for tomorrow. I'm going to design something for you at, uh, it's like a, a, a t-shirt idea. So, uh, wait for that tomorrow. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. So I'll be excited to show it with you. Uh, but outside of that, my daughter's just super obsessed with cats. Everything is cats, and I've mentioned this before. Um, I think I actually talk to a cat on a daily basis more than a, than a kid uh, at this point. And uh, it's funny because we actually have to install rules at my house that there's no cats at the table. Uh, so we're, at dinner, we're eating dinner, breakfast, lunch, whatever, um, no cats at the table, which means you can't talk like a cat, you can't meow, anything like that, because it gets out of hand. Uh, now, I don't know if this is something for all kids or if it's just young, uh, young girls in general, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And when you think about uh, all the cat-related content that there is out there, so you're talking from like Disney, um, you think of all the, the, the movies over the years that represented cats, like from Lion King to Oliver and Company to the other cat one, well, Aristocats. Um, and, I don't know, cats are just uh, they're the bee's knees apparently, so it is what it is, but uh, eventually I might lose my mind. Uh, I think I've got, I think my daughter sleeps with like 15 cat stuffies. They, I know all their names. Um, and, and, and their, their personalities, of course. And, uh, yeah, it's, it, it is what it is. That's, that's uh, being a parent. You, you better like cats if you decide to be a parent. Um, and, uh, outside of that, one thing I, I thought was pretty funny, I shaved the old dome this morning. For me, super simple. Once a week, I get, uh, I get my razor out and I shave my head and, and, you know, trim up the beard and all that. I can barely see it, but, you know, there is a beard there. Uh, but I kind of laugh at a lot of my friends, they've got these like shags going on right now and they have no option. They can't cut their own hair. Not everyone can shave their head, even if even if they wanted to. Some people just look weird with a shaved head. So I think the it, it is kind of funny when, when I think about the benefits I have of being a bald dude. Um, it's, uh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, because you know what? If the average person, average male, is spending about 60, 50, 60 bucks every two weeks on getting a haircut, like that really adds up. So I don't have that cost. I can do it myself. I can do it when I want. And uh, look how uh, look how trim I look in this uh, in uh, in this uh, pandemic, right? So here we go. And you know what? I even put on jeans today. So it's a special day. It's Thursday. We're getting excited for this weekend, and uh, I got no plans. So hey, if anyone wants to hit me up with uh, a video chat or something, have a little, a couple drinky poos, that would be that would be delightful. Hit me up, and that's all I got for today. I'm gonna keep it nice and short, and uh, we'll chat tomorrow. Oh, um, one last thing: stay the fuck home.